hello and welcome once again to Church Online, wherever you're gathering today, you know, whether you're part of any of our uh, physical locations or maybe you've just recently decided to make Nations Church your home online, you need to know that today is an incredibly special day. God is going to show up wherever you are. The Holy Spirit's going to fill whatever space that you're in. And, uh, you know, you need, also need to know that today has been so bathed in intercession, has been so soaked in prayer. And um, our heart for you is that you don't watch and engage with Church Online today as a spectator, but you participate and open up your heart. Today is a very special day. The reason that it's special is because Jesus spoke about the day that we're going to be talking about by introducing to us the Holy Spirit. And John chapter 14, he actually says this to the listener, to the crowd, to the disciples. He said this, I assure you, in other words, I guarantee you, most solemnly, I tell you, in other words, I'm not joking about this. If anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Now, that is a big call. He says, and I will do, in other words, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in through the Son. Yes, I will grant, in other words, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name as presenting all that I am. If you really love me, you will keep or obey my commands. He says all this because of this next verse in verse 16. It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, and the standby, that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive or welcome takes to its heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him, but you know and you recognize him for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Today, I want to speak to you on the thought, do you know who you have? Do you know who you have? Today, all over the world, uh, people are celebrating what is called Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that Jesus had promised in John chapter 16 and made real in the book of Acts chapter 2, where up until that day, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was really uh, caught in glimpses. He was presented in glimpses or foretold of and only special people experienced his presence in specific eras in human history. But the Holy Spirit, as we currently know him today, is the form of, he is God in the form of unseen spirit and divine power. In the old Greek and, and Hebrew language, they would describe him as wind or, or, or breath. You know, we, we, can't, we can't necessarily see wind or breath, but we sure know and recognize it when we get blown over. We see the effects of wind and we know and recognize it to be true even though we can't see it. And that word feel is really important. We feel wind. And in many ways, I genuinely believe that that's why so many people are uncomfortable with the conversation about the Holy Spirit because you have to feel Him rather than try and understand Him. But the Holy Spirit is to be experienced, not explained. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit isn't interested in being explained or informed of. He is to be experienced. And at, at best, maybe I can try and describe Him to you today, but you need to know that all I'm here to do through Church Online is to lead you to experience and encounter Him yourself. You know, it's a little bit like water. And I've got here this, this glass of water, and, and it would be silly of me to stand around and try and describe to everyone the, the two hydrogen atoms and the single oxygen atom and how it works. And, and when I drink it, will my throat uh, uh, move a certain way to, to, to swallow it and try and analyze it and write PhD theses about it? But how many of you know that the most important thing that I need to do is simply pick up this glass and drink? Because I know what my body needs the most is not to understand water, but to drink it. What my soul needs the most is not necessarily to reason the Holy Spirit, but to experience and encounter Him for myself. And that is you, sir. That is you, madam, today. Our whole role today at Church Online is not necessarily to try and explain the Holy Spirit to you, but to lead you to a personal encounter, a personal immersion, a baptism 
of the Holy Spirit that He may fill you and rest upon you the way Jesus said that He would. My prayer today is that you will experience, feel Him. Don't be ashamed of that word. Feel Him for yourself. Feel His advocacy. Feel His strength. Feel His comfort. Feel His, his help. Feel His protection. Feel His power. Because I don't know about you, but I am not interested in explaining the Holy Spirit to people. The Holy Spirit is not interested in being understood. He just wants to be received. Just like water isn't insecure that it's not, it's not analyzed, water is just there to drink, for us to, to, to drink it. And, you know, at the end of this message, we're going we're gonna to give you an opportunity to just step in and respond. And you're going to have an experience. I know that if you were to open your heart up to it, it will change your life. It will activate gifts in you that you never thought that you had. It, it, you're going you're gonna to hear from God in ways you never thought that you could. You're going to experience freedom in your soul like you've never experienced before. Maybe some things that have held you back for years are going to just fall all over you. And that is the power and the present work of the Holy Spirit in your life. And all of this, all of this is readily accessible. It is readily accessible. And you need to know that you don't need to be anyone special. You just need to be a man, a woman who, of faith who confesses Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to open up your heart to Him. You see, not long after Jesus' discourse here in the book of John, the, the, the promised Holy Spirit was fulfilled in the most unlikely of places. It was actually, they say it was a room that was upstairs in a building and there was 120 people I don't know why that number, there was 120 people, but they were gathering illegally. They were scattered. People that had followed Jesus were scattered. They were under persecution. In fact, the Roman Empire was chasing down, like they did Peter, were chasing down these people that had purported to have followed Jesus. So members of the crowds that, that we see in the Gospels had now all scattered. There was no crowd anymore. So this 120 people were holed up, men and women, ordinary people. People that had bills to pay, that families to raise, meals to, to cook, were up in this upper room and there they were about to experience and receive the very Holy Spirit that Jesus promised them in the book of John. And it says this in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind. It wasn't the violent blowing of the violent wind, but it sounded like it. It came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be what looked like tongues of fire. You can see how uh, Luke was struggling to put into words the reality of what was going on here. Tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. In verse 4 it says, all of them were filled. Turn to someone in your room and say, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enable them all of them were filled these were all believers and there was a subsequent and distinct experience that god visited upon them that day that is still available for you to experience yourself don't ever don't ever believe the lie that what happened in the upper room was just for a special 120 people and it was never to happen again. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to visit upon you today in your living room just like He did in that upper room. Some of you might be asking the question, you know, PK, you, you don't understand. I'm incredibly unholy. I struggle with stuff. I, I'm still grappling with things. I'm far from perfect. Why would the Holy Spirit want to be in me an unholy person? You need to understand that that is an incredibly powerful question. When Jesus died on the cross, the holy Jesus took upon our unholy unrighteousness upon himself so that today we can host the Holy Spirit. And if you're thinking in your mind, I'm not worthy to receive the Holy Spirit, you need to understand that you don't receive the Holy Spirit because you're worthy. You receive the Holy Spirit because He's worthy. He has made it possible for ordinary suburban people like you and I, wherever in the world you might be watching this, to receive this Holy Spirit. So take the unworthiness question out of the way. You've been made worthy through Jesus Christ. He was the one that tore the veil. He made it possible for the Holy Spirit to enter into your world, to immerse your life with Himself. And I reckon the barrier 
the barrier that so many people have in actually feeling or experiencing or encountering the Holy Spirit is this thing up here. We try and make sense of the Holy Spirit. We try and get informed about the Holy Spirit. We try and get an explanation about the Holy Spirit. We try and reason with the Holy Spirit. I want to say this to you today, that the Holy Spirit is completely and utterly and eternally unreasonable. He cannot be reasoned with because the Holy Spirit is not to be understood. He is to be experienced. Our experience of the Holy Spirit must inform our understanding of Him, not the other way around. We need to experience and encounter Him first, and that then informs our understanding of Him in the upper room. 120 men and women didn't wait for an explanation. They waited for an encounter. They waited for an experience. They didn't wait for someone to write a paper or a blog on the Holy Spirit to explain. How they, they waited for an experience. And today, you too can have that encounter. You too can have that experience. You too can step in to everything that Jesus promised in the book of John. Don't believe the lie that all of that stopped in the book of Acts, that all of that was just for 120 people uh, in, in an upper room. And, and today, all of us believers 2,000 years later, all that we've got going for us is just church AGMs and arguing about how loud the sound is and, and, and squabbling about, you know, we had cupcakes for Mother's Day and now we, we, we're having samosas for Father's Day. What's going on? That is not the Christian life that Jesus died and rose again and made a way for the Holy Spirit to come and live in us to have. Some of you are saying, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm forgiven of my sins. I'm going to heaven, right? Isn't that all that I need? Isn't that all that there is to, to Christianity? I want to say this to you, sir, madam. There is so much more for you to step into. Jesus was saying, you know, just believing in me is great, but greater things than these you will do. And for you to do greater things than, than what you've seen me do, I'm going to usher in a new era called the Holy Spirit. And he's going to come and he's going to anoint you. I don't know about you, but, but I, I am filled with the Holy Spirit so that my personal walk and, 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 and my faith can be accelerated. But I'm also filled with the Holy Spirit so I can be an effective and fruitful person for you. So Maria, the Holy Spirit is in me for me, but he's on me for you. The Holy Spirit wants to be in you for you, but he's going to come on you for others. The Holy Spirit fills me for me, but he anoints me for the world. He fills me for my heart's sake, but he anoints me for my purpose sake. Y'all getting this? Can I go a little deeper with you? You know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, his reality, his presence, I also genuinely believe that he didn't just come to fill you once. The Bible speaks about being filled, a constant state of being, a perpetual state of being. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, you need to know that it's not a one-off event that you tick off and go, yeah, okay, that was like, uh, uh, I had an encounter back in 1999 at, at some young adult or youth camp. See, when the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, as Jesus said, He wants to constantly stay and remain with you. He wants to keep you being filled. And, and whichever way you want to look at it, you need to understand that, that the Holy Spirit doesn't just come to visit upon you occasionally. We all ought to live a lifestyle that continually hosts the abiding and manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. And by all intents and purposes today, I don't, I'm not here to play semantics with you, but by all intents and purposes today, as far as what I'm about to teach you, the presence of God is the presence of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the presence of God, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to be people that understand how to host His presence, to wait on Him, to open up our hearts to Him. And this is the thing that is incredibly mind-blowing for me. It's that ordinary, suburban, average people just like you and I that have bills to pay, toilets to clean, kids to raise, meals to put on the table, get to host the presence of God. We get to host the presence of God of the Holy Spirit. My flawed, 
broken vessels like us get to host the Holy Spirit. And the reason why I think I don't host His presence enough in my life, that I don't wait on the Holy Spirit enough in my life, is because I think sometimes I take for granted what is readily accessible. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6, it was the days of the Old Testament where the Holy Spirit was not readily available. The Holy Spirit, was his, the presence of God was manifest in certain specific locations and only certain specific people were given the privilege of hosting the presence. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, King David always understood the Spirit of God, the presence of God. But the presence and the Spirit of God resided in something called the Ark of God or the Ark of the Covenant. And in the passage in 2 Samuel chapter 6, the Ark was actually taken into enemy territory and David had dreamt of having the presence of God in the city of Jerusalem, the city of David. And when 2 Samuel chapter 6 actually comes and he manages to get the Ark back and on the way back to the city of David, he understood how valuable, how precious, how beautiful and how powerful the presence of God was. That he would take six steps and he would stop and he would worship. He would sacrifice oxen and sheep. That was the Old Testament. Old Testament people understood how absolutely valuable and precious the manifest presence of God actually is. How much more so do we as New Testament believers that have ready access to everything that the Holy Spirit has already given us through that powerful day at Pentecost? My question to you today is, do you know who you have? Some of you are asking, who am I to have the Holy Spirit? Who am I to host the Holy Spirit? Maybe you've had the Holy Spirit, but you've taken Him for granted. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, Paul actually says this, or do you not know? Here's that question. Do you not know that your body Body, your living body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. That word temple is the, is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Do you even know who you have? This Pentecost Sunday, my prayer for you is that if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've never been fully immersed in it, you will receive Him. And maybe it's for some of you, this Pentecost Sunday, you've, you, you, you've allowed the Holy Spirit's work and presence in your life to go dry, to, to be absent, that you will have a ready infilling. But for others of you, I'm going to awaken you today. My prayer is that there will be an awakening on the inside of you, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and there are dormant gifts on the inside of you. There's dormant power residing on the inside of you that you've never activated because maybe you've forgotten that you are a a carrier, a host of the presence of God. We don't know how to host somebody if we don't know who he is. Back in July last year, uh, we got a phone call from the Prime Minister's office on a Wednesday to say that the Prime Minister is going to be in Perth um, on the weekend. He'd like to take his family to church, to, to the Myrie campus of, of our church. And I can tell you now, in three days, our whole staff scrambled to ensure that the Australian Federal Police could do a walk through our building and, and, and that we would properly host him. And, and it was an incredible day in the house of God to actually have the most powerful man in Australia worshipping with us and, he, and bringing his family. And, and it was an incredible day across all our services. And I remember pondering at the end of the day, uh, the Holy Spirit saying so clearly to me, Ken, it was right that you honoured the Prime Minister the way that you did. You knew who he was in order to host him appropriately. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, why don't you do that for me? Every day. Do you know who you have? You have me. You have my presence. And I'm readily available and accessible for you. Don't take me for granted. I'm here when you sleep. 
I'm there when you brush your teeth. I'm really available for you when you're stressed. I'm there for you when you're happy. I'm there with you in your worst parenting moment. I'm there for you in your best times in marriage. I'm there for you in your most successful, fruitful times in ministry. I'm there for you in your workplace. I'm there for you when things aren't going so good financially. I'm there for you when you've just got a cash bonus. I'm there. Don't you dare take me for granted because I am in you. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? On Pentecost Sunday, my question to you is simply this. Do you know who you have? Because we're never going to be able to know how to host the Holy Spirit until we step in and experience and know that He is the living, manifest presence of God in our lives. Maybe you've never experienced the Holy Spirit because you've never received the first step, which is Jesus Christ, into your life. Jesus came. The divine was made incarnate. He dwelt among us in bodily form and he was crucified. And he rose again. It was during that time in the Gospels that he actually ushered in or made a way or introduced the Holy Spirit. But before the Holy Spirit is introduced to you, you need to open up your heart to Jesus Christ. He died and rose again to forgive you of all of your sins, to give you a brand new life and to be your personal Lord and Savior. And maybe you're here today and you've never received Jesus. Or maybe you want to come back to Him for the first time after a really long time. And I don't know why you're watching church online, wherever that you are. But the Holy Spirit is also at work right now in leading you to what we call a salvation moment. And so I'm going to lead you in prayer right now, if that's you. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. Repeat after me from your heart. What are we praying for? I'm going to lead you in prayer to ask Jesus to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, to forgive you of all that you've done. There's nothing religious that you need to do. You simply need to receive Him into your heart. And so why don't you bow your heads, close your eyes. Christians, you can pr pray along with me too right now. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came and you died and you rose again for me. Lord Jesus, I repent of all of my sins and I ask that you give me a brand new future and wipe away all of my past. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. And we thank you that from this moment on, our life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or for the first time after a long time, don't you do this journey on your own. I want you to let us know about you on nationschurch.com forward slash my decision. Please just identify who you are. Our team, our pastors are going to send you an e-pack and be in touch with you, pray with you, connect with you, journey with you from here. From this moment on, you are not to do your Christian life on your own, but you're to do it in community, people that love and care for you. But to everybody else watching in the stream, don't you log off because this is probably the most critical part of today's church online. There is no accident that 120 people in an upper room, they were already believers. Many of them had walked with Jesus. Many of them witnessed the crucifixion maybe, had seen Him risen from the grave and had interacted with Him as the risen Savior. Now as Jesus had ascended, they waited in the upper room and they experienced, they felt, they encountered what looked like tongues of fire, what felt like a rushing, blowing, violent wind. And the Holy Spirit presented Himself to them fully. Today, you need to know that that experience is still valid for you. And if you've never experienced the Holy Spirit like that, we're going to lead you in an opportunity 
to experience it. We call it the baptism or the full immersion of the Holy Spirit in your life. Maybe you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit once. Maybe you've experienced and encountered Him, but you're feeling dry on the inside. We also genuinely believe that the Holy Spirit wants you to continuously, perpetually be filled. Or maybe you're here today and you haven't awakened to the fact that there are dormant gifts and, and power that's been lying passive in your life because you've allowed the work of the Holy Spirit to be passive in your life. I'm praying today that as you encounter Him, that is going to be awakened on the inside of you. There's going to be gifts that have been lying dormant that will flow again. You'll be able to hear things from God and say things with great accuracy. You're going to have insight uh, from God that you never thought that you would. Things are going to be stirred up on the inside of you. Some of you, as you encounter the Holy Spirit today, in whatever context that you might be in, you might find yourself speaking uncontrollably in a foreign tongue. And I want you to know that is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is nothing that you've made up in your own head. God is in your room right now and in no matter where you are today you need to know that the Holy Spirit wants to encounter with you not because you're worthy but because Jesus is worthy not because you're holy but because Jesus is holy and as you put your faith in Jesus you've opened the door wide for the Holy Spirit to come and completely fill your life. I love it that it says all who were in the room were filled. The Holy Spirit does not discriminate race, does not discriminate age, does not discriminate socioeconomic standing, does not discriminate education levels. If you're a living, breathing soul, who loves Jesus and have received Him into your life, you can receive the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Today, we're going to lead you into a worship moment. And as we do, come on, would you stand to your feet? Come on, stand to your feet wherever you are. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. Come on, begin to shift. I know there's an atmosphere shift that's already coming into you right now, into your room. There's an atmosphere shift. I can sense it. I can sense it here in this room. This moment is being soaked in intercession and prayer right now. There's people that are praying right around behind the cameras for you. So come on, would you engage right now? As Ray begins to lead us, the song that says, there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. It's your presence, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come in this place. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Come on, sing, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Oh 
Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come and flood this place in the end. Yeah, your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what I want long for to be.
fresh on me. I'm just 
Take me back to where we started 